Since the death of the historical Buddha, Siddhartha Gautama, Buddhist monastic communities have periodically convened to settle doctrinal and disciplinary disputes and to revise and correct the contents of the sutras. These gatherings, referred to by historians as Buddhist councils, are recorded in the Buddhist sutras as having begun immediately following the death of the Buddha and have continued into the modern era. The number, dating, and ordering of the councils typically employed in Western academia is based primarily on Theravada historical chronicles regional or sectarian gatherings not involving the Mahavihara Theravada lineage may be regarded as equivalent in significance by other traditions. The earliest councils for which there is little historical evidence outside of the sutras are regarded as canonical events by every Buddhist tradition, while some later councils have primarily been concerned only with the Theravada tradition. First Buddhist Council c. 400 BCE. According to the scriptures of all Buddhist schools, the First Buddhist Council was held soon after the death of the Buddha, dated by the majority of recent scholars around 400 BCE, under the patronage of the king Ajatashatru with the monk Mahakasyapa presiding, at Satipani Caves Raigriya now Rajgir. Its objective was to preserve the Buddha's sayings and the monastic discipline or rules The suttas were recited by Ananda, and the Vinaya was recited by Upali. According to D.N. Commentary's introduction, the Abhidhamma Pitaka, or its Matika, an ancient commentary was also included. Also, the Sangha made the unanimous decision to keep all the rules of the Vinaya, even the lesser and the minor rules. Some scholars of Indian Buddhism have questioned the event's historicity, although Sri Lankan and Theravadan sources display a level of internal coherence that suggest otherwise. The circumstances surrounding the first Buddhist council are recorded in the Vinaya Pitaka of the early Buddhist schools. The text is called the Recitation of 500 because 500 senior monks were chosen by the community to collect and clarify the Buddha's teachings. Second Buddhist Council The historical records for the so-called Second Buddhist Council derive primarily from the canonical Vinayas of various schools. In most cases, these accounts are found at the end of the Skandaka portion of the Vinaya. While inevitably disagreeing on points of details, they nevertheless agree that the root dispute was points of Vinaya or monastic discipline. The Second Council resulted in the first schism in the Sangha. Modern scholars see this event as probably caused by a group of reformists called Staviras who split from the conservative majority Mahasamgikas. This view is supported by the Vinaya texts themselves, as Vinayas associated with the Staviras do contain more rules than those of the Mahasamgika Vinaya. Virtually all scholars agree that this Second Council was a historical event. There is no agreement however on the dating of the event or if it was pre or post Ashoka 304-232 BCE, it was held at Vishali under the patronage of King Kalasoka and the presidency of Sabakami. Third Council In striking contrast to the uniform accounts of the Second Council, there are records of several possible third councils. These different versions function to authorize the founding of one particular school or other. According to the Theravada commentaries and chronicles, the Third Buddhist Council was convened by the Mauryan king Ashoka at Pataliputra today's Patna, under the leadership of the monk Magaliputta Its objective was to purify the Buddhist movement, particularly from opportunistic factions which had been attracted by the royal patronage. The king asked the suspect monks what the Buddha taught, and they claimed he taught views such as eternalism, etc., which are condemned in the canonical Brahmahala Sutta. He asked the virtuous monks, and they replied that the Buddha was a teacher of analysis, Vibhajavadin, an answer that was confirmed by Magaliputta Tissa. The council proceeded to recite the scriptures once more, adding to the canon Magaliputta Tissa's own book, the Kathavathu, a discussion of various dissenting Buddhist views now contained in the Theravada Abhidhamma Pitaka. This council seems to have been the cause of the split between the Sarvastivada and the Vibhajavada schools. Also, emissaries were sent to various countries in order to spread Buddhism, as far as the Greek kingdoms in the west, in particular the neighboring Greco Bactrian kingdom, and possibly even farther according to the inscriptions left on stone pillars by Ashoka. According to Frau Wallner, Frau Wallner 1956, several of these missionaries were responsible for founding schools in various parts of India. Majadika was the father of the Kashmiri Sarvastivada. 
Dvaitas, Yanaka Dhammarakita may have been the founder of the Dharmaguptaka school, Mahadeva, sent to the Mahisa country may have been the founder of the Mahisasakas, and several teachers travelled to the Himalayas where they founded the Hemavada school, including a certain Kasapagata, who may be connected with the Kasayapayas. Relics of some of the Hemavada monks have been excavated at Vedisa in central India. The most famous of the missionaries, and the main focus of interest for these Theravada histories, is Mahinda, who travelled to Sri Lanka where he founded the school we now know as Theravada. The Theravada's own Dipavamsa records a quite different council called the Great Recital, Mahasangiti, which it claims was held by the reformed Vajipatakas following their defeat at the Second Council. The Dipavamsa criticizes the Mahasangitikas who are the same as the Mahasangikas for rejecting various texts as non-canonical, the Vinaya Paravera, the six books of the Abhidhamma, the Patisambhita, the Nidesa, part of the Jatakas, and some verses. Dipavamsa 76, 82 the Mahasangika, for their part, remember things differently, they allege, in the Saraputrapurapricha that there was an attempt to unduly expand the old Vinaya. The Mahasangika's own Vinaya gives essentially the same account of the Second Council as the others, i.e. they were on the same side. An entirely different account of Mahasangika origins is found in the works of the Sarvastivada group of schools. Vasumitra tells of a dispute in Pataliputra at the time of Ashoka over five heretical points, that an arahant can have nocturnal emission, that he can have doubts, that he can be taught by another, that he can lack knowledge, and that the path can be aroused by crying, What suffering? These same points are discussed and condemned in Magaliputta Tissa's Kathavathu, but there is no mention of this council in Theravadan sources. The later Mahavabhasa develops this story into a lurid smear campaign against the Mahasangika founder, who it identifies as Mahadeva. This version of events emphasizes the purity of the Kashmiri Sarvastivadins, who are portrayed as descended from the Arahants who fled persecution due to Mahadeva. <laughs> Fourth Buddhist councils By the time of the Fourth Buddhist councils, Buddhism had long since splintered into different schools. The Theravada had a fourth Buddhist council in the 1st century BCE in Tambapani, i.e. Sri Lanka, at a Lokalina now Alu Vihara during the time of King Vatagamani Abhaya. However it should be clarified that an anonymous local chieftain had given patronage and not the king, since he was a firm follower of the Abhayagir school a Mahayana sect. In fact one of the main reasons for the council was the cruel policy the king held against the Mahavihara priests who were Theravadians who were once attacked at the Mahavihara premises killing many and driving away the others. The temple was destroyed and in its place a Mahayana temple was built. The other main reasons for the council were the unstable political situation within the country due to constant invasions which lead the king himself to flee several times and also severe famine. It is said to have been devoted to committing the entire Pali canon to writing, which had previously been preserved by memory. No mention had been made as to who led this council, for which the approximate cause would have been the deteriorating status of Buddhism then, and the collective effort by the priesthood to preserve the religion in its purest form therefore not needing a leader only the fact that the Mahavihara priesthood i.e. Theravada school took part in this recital and compilation had been mentioned. Another fourth Buddhist council was held in the Sarvastivada tradition, said to have been convened by the Kushan Emperor Kanishka, in 78 AD at Kandalban in Kashmir. It is said that Kanishka gathered 500 bhikkhus in Kashmir, headed by Vasumitra, to systematize the Sarvastivadin Abhidharma texts, which were translated from earlier Prakrit vernacular languages such as Gandhari in Karasthi script into the classical language of Sanskrit. It is said that during the council 300,000 verses and over 9 million statements were compiled, a process which took 12 years to complete. Although the Sarvastivada are no longer extant as an independent school, its traditions were inherited by the Mahayana tradition. The late professor Etienne Lamotte, an eminent Buddhologist, held that Kanishka's council was fictitious. However, David Snellgrove, another eminent Buddhologist, considers the Theravada account of the Third Council and the Sarvastivada account of the Fourth Council equally tendentious, illustrating the uncertain veracity of much of these histories. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Theravada Buddhist Council in 1871, Fifth Buddhist Council. Another Buddhist council, this time presided by Theravada monks took place in Mandalay, Burma, in 1871 in the reign of King Minden. 
The chief objective of this meeting was to recite all the teachings of the Buddha and examine them in minute detail to see if any of them had been altered, distorted or dropped. It was presided over by three elders, the Venerable Mahathera Jagarabhivamsa, the Venerable Narindabhidaja, and the Venerable Mahathera Sumangalasami in the company of some 2,400 monks 2, Their joint Dhamma recitation lasted for five months. It was also the work of this council to approve the entire Tripitaka inscribed for posterity on 729 marble slabs in the Burmese script before its recitation. This monumental task was done by the monks and many skilled craftsmen who upon completion of each slab had them housed in beautiful miniature pitaka pagodas on a special site in the grounds of King Mindan's Kuthoda Pagoda at the foot of Mandalay Hill where it and the so-called largest book in the world, stands to this day. This council is not generally recognized outside Burma. <laughs> Theravada Buddhist Council in 1954 Sixth Buddhist Council. The Sixth Council was called at Kaba I in Yangon formerly Rangoon in 1954, 83 years after the fifth one was held in Mandalay. It was sponsored by the Burmese government led by the then Prime Minister, the Honorable Yu Nu. He authorized the construction of the Maha Pasana Guha, the Great Cave, an artificial cave very much like India's Satipani Cave where the first Buddhist council had been held. Upon its completion the council met on 17 May 1954. As in the case of the preceding councils, its first objective was to affirm and preserve the genuine Dhamma and Vinaya. However it was unique insofar as the monks who took part in it came from eight countries. These 2,500 learned Theravada monks came from Myanmar, Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, Sri Lanka, India, and Nepal. Germany can only be counted as the nationality of the only two Western monks in attendance, Venerable Nyanataloka Mahathera and Venerable Nyanaponika Thera. They both were invited from Sri Lanka. The late Venerable Mahasi Sayadaw was appointed the noble task of asking the required questions about the Dhamma of the Venerable Vedanta Vikadasarabhavamsa who answered all of them learnedly and satisfactorily. By the time this council met all the participating countries had had the Pali Tripitaka rendered into their native scripts, with the exception of India, the traditional recitation of the Buddhist scriptures took two years and the Tripitaka and its allied literature in all the scripts were painstakingly examined and their differences noted down and the necessary corrections made and all the versions were then collated. It was found that there was not much difference in the content of any of the texts. Finally, after the council had officially approved them, all of the books of the Tipitaka and their commentaries were prepared for printing on modern presses and published in the Burmese script. This notable achievement was made possible through the dedicated efforts of the 2,500 monks and numerous lay people. Their work came to an end on the evening of Vesak, 24 May 1956, exactly two and a half millennia after Buddha's Parinibbana, according to the traditional Theravada dating. Topic. See also World Fellowship of Buddhists Topic. References Topic. Bibliography Cousins, L. S. 2001. On the Vibhajavadins. Buddhist Studies Review, 18 131–182. Dutt, N. 1998. Buddhist Sects in India. New Delhi, Mutilal Banarsidass. Frauwallner, E. 1956. The Earliest Vinaya and the Beginnings of Buddhist Literature. Lamott, E. 1976. History of Indian Buddhism. Paris, Peters Press. La Vallée Poussin, Louis de. 1905. Les Conciles Boutiques, Louvain, J. B. Istas. La Vallée Poussin, Louis de. 1976. The Buddhist Councils, Calcutt, K. P. Bagchi. Law, B.C. 1940, reprinted 1999. The Debates Commentary. Oxford, Pali Text Society. Mukherjee, Biswadeb. 1994. The Riddle of the First Buddhist Council, a retrospection in Chung Hua Buddhist Journal, No. 7, pp. 452 473, 1994. Prebish, J. N. 1977. Mahasamgika Origins. 
History of Religions, pp. 237–72. Prebish, Charles S. 1974. A Review of Scholarship on the Buddhist Councils. Journal of Asian Studies 33 239–254. 